This screencast is entitled Getting Started with Search in SharePoint Server 2010. My name is John Ross. I'm a SharePoint Server MVP and also a senior consultant with SharePoint 911. In this screencast, we're going to be talking about several, uh, several of the new search capabilities of SharePoint 2010. And, and here's a quick overview of, of the types of things that we're going to be covering. Uh, starting off with what's new for SharePoint 2010. What are the new search capabilities um, that, that SharePoint's bringing to the table? We'll also be discussing what the new end user search experience is going to look like and uh, then move on to talk about how the social capabilities of SharePoint 2010 have been integrated and, and married into the search experience. Um, and then toward the end of the presentation, we're going to be talking about uh, some of the IT Pro topics such as scalability and redundancy, uh, lots of changes there and um, so we're going to be uh, making sure that we cover that at the end and there's even some more stuff that we're going to cover at the end uh, d as we sort of wrap it all up. But just a few words about search in general and SharePoint uh, SharePoint Server 2010 and, and the search experience. It, it really is a, a best-in-class robust search solution that has native SharePoint integration that allows for the searching of both structured and unstructured content. And, and what does that really mean? Well, I if you think of uh, if you think of all the content in SharePoint, by nature the content in SharePoint is going to be non-relational or could also be thought of as unstructured. You know, it, uh, it's just information that's, you know, such as like a file share or something that doesn't really have a, any type of primary key. Um, and, and obviously SharePoint can natively search. Uh, unstructured content, but it can also search structured content such as SQL databases and um, you know other type of line of business applications. So, kind of brings us to the next point: oh, what can SharePoint index? And as I mentioned, SharePoint search can index sh files in SharePoint, document document libraries, lists, um, web pages, things of the things of those types. Um, SharePoint can also index file shares. So if you've got content stored across your organization like so many people do in, in various file shares and, and different places, SharePoint can, can be set up to pull, that, to pull that content as well. So if that content exists today, maybe, it, maybe it's older content, doesn't necessarily make sense to be moved into SharePoint, you can, still leave it in, you can still leave it in the file share where it exists today and still take advantage of the SharePoint searching capabilities. You can also point SharePoint to any any type of content that's web accessible, uh, such as a external website, maybe your maybe a competitor site, or maybe your organization itself has some has some other websites outside of SharePoint that you want to make sure get in that get indexed, so that when a user goes in and types a search query, they can return results not only from the SharePoint content but also results from those from those other websites. Exchange public folders can also be indexed. Uh, again, very similar to the file share scenario, where if you've got a lot of content that's stored in your exchange public folders, that too can be included in your um, in in your result sets. And databases and line of business applications, if uh, SQL databases, Oracle, um, many of these other types of line of business applications, if you're storing product data, customer data, all of these types of things, um, SharePoint can be configured. To, to go ahead and, and index that content, whether it's simply pointing it at the other database or using the business connectivity services or the BCS to surface that information in SharePoint as an external as an external content type or an external list that can be that also can be indexed with SharePoint. What's new with search in SharePoint Server 2010? Well, there's been uh, several changes and. This is kind of a high-level overview of what most of those changes are around. We've got we've got some changes to the search center, which is the the place where users go and interact with search and um, type in their type in their query and get results back. There's been some changes to the to the core search experience and how users are actually performing search. Um, Relevancy has also been tweaked and enhanced, and we'll talk about that as well as some changes at the uh, about architecture and how specifically the, the engine that's, that's running search and how that works. 
So first we're going to talk about the Search Center. And for users that have used Search in SharePoint 2007, a lot of it is very similar. So you still have um, scopes, which would be um, different ways that, uh, that the information is uh, divided in your organization. So in other words, uh, by default, you're going to have one scope, which is going to which is going to be the all site scope that shows you content from across your organization. Um, but maybe if you were looking to view information a little bit more specifically in your company, like you know maybe just a uh, you want to see information from the HR department, you could set up a scope that specifically looks at the HR site so that you could go in, choose the HR site, run a search, and it would only return you results from that specific department. You also still have web parts. The search web parts are what, uh, how you interact with searching in SharePoint. You go ahead and you type your query into the search box web part. The results are displayed from the core search results web part. Um, those are still there. Um, there's been a couple changes, but for the most part, those are still the same. Within your search center, you also have best bets. Um, and a best bet would be if you were to do a, a search, like, say, on on dog, and you knew that you as an administrator knew that when people searched on dog, they were most of the time, they'd probably really be interested in a certain document or something like that. You could set up a document so that, uh, or you could set up a best bet so that when people do a, a specific search, a specific result is always shown to them to you know, help them get to the content that they're looking for uh, more specifically and quickly. Advanced search capabilities are there that allow users even more control over finding the information that they're looking for. And then finally, we have a new uh, one of the new changes for the Search Center, which is the addition of the refinement panel or ref refiners. Um, we'll talk about that in a couple slides, so I don't want to jump the gun on that too early. Here's an example of what the new search experience looks looks like, and um, users familiar with 2007 um, will f will find this very familiar. You still have at the top, you have the search box. You type in your search, you run the search. The results are displayed in the center of the page in the core results web part. Um, we've still got the alerts and the RSS feeds in the upper right hand corner. Um, so again not really too significant uh no no significant changes here the the biggest difference is going to be that refinement panel over on the left um that allows you to see and visualize your results and and refine your results a little bit more specifically so that you could do a broad search and then get down to those results that you're looking for by clicking on the refiners here's a here's an example of the web parts um, that are the various search web parts that are available. So when you create a search center, the search center is pre-configured with all of these web parts already already to go. Um, if you were to put the search center into edit mode, you would see you would see all the various uh, all the various web parts in web part zones. And it, it's possible if you were looking to customize the search experience, you could go in, edit, and modify the web parts, and change the settings to uh, get different search behavior to uh, to meet the various needs of of your search requirements. So the first place to look for that would be uh, the a couple of the the mo more common tweaks would be changes to the search core results web part or s changes to the search box. But uh, it should also be noted that if you have any page that has a web part zone, you could drop any of these web parts on any page and um, get a custom search experience. I mentioned a couple of times this the new concept of the search refinements and the refinement panel um, as we showed you is at the left hand side of the page and it's essentially a, a self-service drill down so a common way to use this would be if a user went in did a search on something like dog um, but they were looking for a specific type of dog like a German Shepherd they could start with dog look at all the results and then maybe on the left hand side there would be um, something that would there would be like a metadata tag that would allow them to to filter down based on german shepherds and then within german shepherds they could drill down even further until they've arrived at the content that they were looking for so it's another way for users to to uh, get to the content that they're looking for maybe if they don't even know what they're looking for to start off with um, so anytime you you have 
um, you're giving your users more flexibility and, and in order to get to the content that they're looking for. Um, it helps to improve the search experience and help them to get more relevant results, which is really the key to searching. Another big change is this new query syntax for SharePoint Server 2010. In the past, in SharePoint 2007, a lot of users commented about, hey, I really wish we had the ability to support Boolean operators, or I wish that we had the ability to do wildcard searching. And the truth was, the engine of SharePoint 2007 actually did support these things, but they couldn't be accessed and utilized through the user interface. Now with, with SharePoint 2010, we now have the ability where we can type in these Boolean operators and, and wildcard searches directly into the search boxes and get the results that we're looking for. So you'll see an example there of a, of a query, um, and you'll see that the query has parentheses and quotations and ands and ors and property restrictions. So you can type in advanced queries like this. The um, supports it right out of the box, and you'll, you can do very advanced searching directly from the search box. But maybe you want to do something, a, a more broad search. Maybe you aren't really sure exactly of a terminology or, or a spelling or something like that. You could type in the beginning of a search term with an asterisk and get and, and do wildcard searching or prefix matching that could help you do those broad searches. And maybe after you do a broad search, then maybe use the refinement panel to further get down and, and find the exact results that you're looking for. You can also use uh, various operators like the equals, greater than, less than, less than equals, greater than equals. So tremendous amount of power to eventually get down and find the exact co uh, content that your users are looking for. The relevancy formula has been enhanced. Um, this means that there's um, more fields that are, that are being included in the relevancy algorithm, which only helps to, to further um, give better, more relevant results. There's also the there's also now the the capability of doing URL fuzzy matching. So if you're typing in a search and don't exactly get it right, SharePoint's going to make an attempt to to try to guess that you meant something else based on your uh, based on if your query wasn't exactly right. And then one of the other big changes that that we'll be talking about more is is the results click through. And this means that when users are doing their queries, and let's say you do my example query of dog, and you get back a series of results. Um, as users get back those results and click on the results for that query, the more often that users click on those results or click through, um, the documents that are clicked on more are going to get a relevancy boosting within that query so that uh, organically the most relevant results for a given query will float to the top so that hopefully uh, that, that's going to over time mean that as your users are going in and just doing whatever they normally do, the, uh, the, they're going to start getting better results just from using search and clicking on stuff. We also have enhanced multilingual support. Um, this, uh, this allows for a automatic detection of language for many document types as well as improve rankings of documents in multilingual collections. Organizations that, global organizations that are supporting multiple languages now um, can take advantage of these new capabilities and get more relevant results across all languages supported for their company. All of this adds up to a great search experience out of the box where users can get more relevant results and find information faster. Whether they're starting with a very broad search and using the refiners to get down exactly what they're looking for, or whether they start off with a very specific query using the Boolean operators and the um, different, different aspects of the query syntax, they can get to the information that they're looking for faster and get more relevant results, which, as I've mentioned, is really the key to any search engine. And f but finally, you can, you can search from anywhere. You can search not only from, the user, from your browser in SharePoint, but you could also search from, uh, you can also integrate with SharePoint search from your Windows uh, desktop search, as well as doing searching from your mobile phone. So no matter where you are, um, you can take advantage of the great, powerful features that SharePoint is offering, uh, SharePoint Search is offering to, to get the information that you're looking for in your organization. Now let's take a quick tour of the new search experience in SharePoint Server 2010. 
I've launched my browser and opened up my team site in my in my SharePoint portal. And I'm going to start off by typing in, by going up here to the search box, and I'm going to type in a, a search query. So for this example, maybe I'm going to be looking for a someone who's familiar with Six Sigma. So I'll type in Six Sigma, I'll press the Enter key, and you'll see that I get back a number of results. Now, as you can see from getting the results back, this is what the search center experience would look like. You've got the results here in the center, um, complete with the name, the um, description, uh, short description of the document with you know some metadata tossed in there, information about the author and size. We've also got the URL down here. Um, at the right-hand side, we do also have our, our people search panel that even though I'm doing a regular search, it's showing more, me information about various people involved in the organization that might have something to do with this search. And we're going to be talking about the people search in just a second. Um, over at the left-hand side, we've got our refinements. Um, so we can refine on a number of different on a number of different aspects, whether it's the type of result, um, site, author, or modified date. So maybe in this case, I'm looking for I want something that's refined on a specific author, so I'll click on Don Funk, and what you'll see is that it's going to further refine my results to give me a more, uh, a smaller, tighter result set that gives me might give me a better shot of getting to what I want uh, more quickly and easily. SharePoint 2010 is often the place where all of the users across an organization go to do their jobs and collaborate on content. And the social component of, of the collaboration experience is, very, is a very important one and, and one that and an area that has been significantly improved in SharePoint 2010. And the search, the search capabilities are now more social than ever. So when users go in and they use SharePoint, it's now becoming the front door to the office social network. And what that means basically is that when users go in and, and perform a search, they don't necessarily have to search just on content. They can also search, be searching for people. And that means a number of different things. They could go ahead and they could type in a user's name. If they were looking for me, they could type in John. And if they type in, uh, if they type in John, they'll do a search and get back all the users in the company that, uh, that have the first name of John. But what if, what if, uh, what if my actual name was was Jonathan, and uh, and it, but everybody in the organization knew me as John? They could go in and they could type J O N. They could type in J O H N. They could type in Jonathan, and SharePoint is going to automatically uh, look for common variants of of nicknames to help people find the users that they're looking for, even if they don't know the exact spelling or user goes by a, a nickname or something like that. So that's that's one of the new additions to SharePoint 2010. Um, also, phonetic name matching. Um, if a user has a, an unusually spelled name or something like that, you could still go in, type their name, may not get it exactly correct, but SharePoint's still going to make an effort to try to match those users uh, phonetically. Um, what, to make sure that if no matter what you type in, hopefully you're gonna if you can get close to the name, SharePoint will will still find it for you. As we've talked about, also the relevance models in SharePoint have been tuned for the people search. Um, this is another area how relevance has been improved and and increased. So the I so no matter um, it's going to take into account your social distance, how far you in away from people in the organization are you. Um, so when you're looking for people, it's going to say that the users that are socially closer to you in the in the organization are going to be the ones that it's going to think are are more relevant to you and the ones that you might be interested in in communicating with or interacting with uh, a little bit a little bit more so than others. But how is it going to determine social distance? Well, it's going to go in and it's going to. Uh, it, SharePoint will be able to go and look at your email interactions, look at who you communicate most frequently with, look at the types of things you communicate with people on, and going to be able to make a, a, a judgment based on and, and create that social distance. But as I mentioned, um, you don't necessarily always have to be searching on a user by their name. 
You can also search on a user based on their expertise or their interest. So if you had a new project that was spinning up and you needed a project manager or you needed someone with a specific specialty, you could search on that specialty um, and find the users that you're looking for who most closely match that expertise that you're looking for. Or maybe you're trying to get a corporate outing together to go to a baseball game. You want to find the users that are most interested in baseball. You could search on that as well and, and turn up your users and, and their social interests. Maybe get a golf, uh, a golf outing together. All of those things are now possible uh, with the social search in SharePoint 2010. Social behavior also is going to drive search quality. So we've talked about click-through impacting relevancy, and, and that's definitely true. The more often that you click through on a document, the bigger boost to the relevancy ranking a, a, a document is going to get. So organically, your search results and, and relevancy is going to improve. Just as users go through and do whatever, do whatever it is, just search and use the content in SharePoint. Um, you're also, uh, your SharePoint is also going to get query suggestions mined from the search log. So as people are searching on documents, it's going to, uh, it, it's going to be looking through the search logs to try to determine uh, which ones are, are the best, are the best results to be using for a specific search. Um, and finally, when users are going through and, and using their content, um, and, and browsing the content in SharePoint, they'll be able to tag uh, tag various documents to for various reasons, add metadata to it, and go in and say, if I see a document, it's about a specific subject. They can go in and they can tag that document with information, additional information that's going to help to further influence the relevancy of that document so that as as the users are tagging it, it it's it's further going to benefit other users who might be looking for similar information. Let's take a look at the new people and expertise search capabilities of SharePoint 2010. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to my SharePoint search center that I've already created and I want to click on the on the people the the people scope tab that's that's up at the top of my search center. So now that I've selected that I'm able to type in the a search or a search and, and look for somebody in my company. Um, in this example, we're going to pretend that I was introduced to an individual at a party um, or some sort of social gathering, and I, and I think I, I remember him being introduced as Philip. I'm not really very good at names, and I'm obviously also not very good at spelling, so I'm going to type in uh, Philip. I'm going to go ahead and run that search. You'll see I get back a couple results, and even though I badly misspelled it, I still got a I still got a couple results back. And this first individual is the Philip that I remember from the party. I recognize that picture anywhere. And and as you can see, um, we get back what we get back is the people the people search results page. And you can see it has information about about the user, their name, their contact information, their phone number, email address, information about what they do. Um, and then they've also they can also enter in uh, specific areas of expertise that they feel especially confident in so that if anybody had any questions that these would be the the things that if 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 a search came up on these various um, on these va various pieces of criteria they'd be the ones that they would feel comfortable answering questions about you also notice over here on the left hand side we have the the refinement panel that we've talked about several times so in this case, if I wanted to refine my results even farther, I could type in or, or I could select that I wanted to refine based on like business process managers. Clicking on that would refine and you would see that the business process manager is this Terrence Phillip that I was looking for. Um, we, you can also refine based on those, uh, those areas that users have individually uh, said that they're experts in. But let's pretend in this case, um, maybe I want to fill out a team that I'm looking for. Um, I need a project manager. Um, so let's go ahead and let's look for a project manager. Go ahead and run this search. And you'll notice that I get back a number of results now. And, this, and these results are coming back not based on a name but on expertise. So I've got a number of people here who list themselves as project managers. But it's also pulling out information about uh, that... It, not just about their job title, but other things that they've entered uh, up here. This guy is, uh, he says he's a project manager. Um, well, in my case, I want something, 
let's see. I need a I need him to be more than just a project manager. I need a senior project manager. So we'll we'll click on senior project manager and we get a number of results back. Um, maybe what maybe I'm thinking about having a having some sort of team gathering and you know I want to make sure I got senior project managers that are into bird watching. I can click on. I can click on a uh, on an interest, get back information about this user, and then whenever I, I can I can look at their description and see is this something is this a project manager that I would want to fill out my team, and I can look on the uh, recent documents that they've filled out or that they've created. And I notice that there's a few examples here that they've um, the, of content that they've created, to, and I can look through this content to see is this does this uh, is this user going to be a good fit for our team. Do they have relevant experience? All of those different types of things. Um, so, the people search capabilities in SharePoint aren't just about looking for you know looking for phone numbers, typing in a username. You can use it in many different ways. Uh, it, it, you you can still type in users' names, but also you could use it to uh, to help fill out teams or or quickly get access to that information and find the users in your company who might have that information that you uh, that would be critical to a job task that you were looking to complete. SharePoint 2010 now supports a new architecture that provides for more scalability uh, in with the search with the search applications. Um, if you remember in SharePoint 2007. Search lived in the shared service provider, or SSP. This was a good, it was a good idea. It allowed for multiple web applications to all have their search served up by uh, through a single SSP, or you could have multiple SSPs if you wanted to. But one of the problems is is that every in every web application that was associated with an SSP also shared an index and this caused problems in some big organizations or if you had uh, um, uh, if you had multiple companies say let's say you had multiple partners all on the same web application and they were all sharing a let's say they were all sharing an index you didn't necessarily want your information uh, in the same index as maybe someone else that shouldn't see your information. So, although it, you know, SharePoint handled security, it was one of those things where people didn't, it weren't always comfortable with mixing their information uh, in in another index with uh, with with people that shouldn't be seeing it. So, in SharePoint 2010, we now have this idea of a service application. Um, that allows for more granularity and more control for how search works so that users can have a specific site collection that's associated with a service application and then we can you know spin up other site collections and each site collection could be associated with a different with a different uh, service application this this allows for multi-tenant solutions now it also provides for improved redundancy and scalability to to scale to scale out to add more servers to improve to reduce bottlenecks and improve search performance. So what does it mean to have search as a service application? Well, as I mentioned, it's similar it's very very similar in concept to a shared service provider but but rather than um, having these instances that are kind of sitting out there that are associated with all these different web applications, we can now spin up more service applications, uh, a, a, as many service applications as we need, that allows for more, a more flexible shared service model compared to the previous version. So, you know, this is an instance. This is a, a case where it's very similar to the previous version, but it's different and allows for uh, a set of services to be associated within a given application. So you don't have to associate the whole web application with the shared service in this case. Now you could have, um, you could assign those uh, services to to the specific site collections as um, as specifically or more, more broadly, um, whatever makes the most sense for your organization. And the same service can be configured differently on two different web applications so that you have that additional control to set things up however, um, to, to your current business needs and, and whatever the business requirements are. In this slide, we're going to talk about just real briefly about how the search process works in SharePoint. So when we look at this, a user goes into 
um, to the uh, to the search center, which is represented by that uh, by that white box at the top. User goes in, enters a query. Uh, that query is going to be passed um, to the query server, and the query server is going to look for the results. Um, it's going to compare the the results that are entered in the in the various index partitions. So this is a new change for SharePoint 2010. We now have the ability to have additional index partitions, um, which are basically little pieces of the index. So instead of having to have a big gigantic index now, we can now chunk it into smaller partitions to hopefully um, refresh those those indexes uh, more quickly and also. Um, in more manageable pieces. So instead of having this big blob, we're going to have um, smaller, smaller pieces of the index that that can be refreshed uh, more frequently and be easier for the servers across the farm to to move around and share a little bit more quickly and easily. So user enters the query. It's passed to the query servers, and the query servers compare the query against the index partition. Um, and you'll see there that you can have multiple index partitions, and those are those are generated by the indexer and in this case we also have multiple indexers in in this farm that we've highlighted and that's another big change that um, the indexers are going to be the servers that are going to go out and and crawl the content and and generate generate these indexes but now in SharePoint 2010 it's possible to have multiple indexes that allow for greater redundancy in SharePoint 2007 we only had one index server per farm Perform. Now we have additional indexers, which allows for better performance and also additional redundancy. So the um, indexers go hit the crawlers, which which go out to the various content sources and and build that uh, build that index that's, that that uh, is eventually um, used by the query servers to then serve the results back up to the users. Some other improvements with SharePoint Search 2010. Um, the search administration has been in, has been improved to provide better information, easier easier access to the type of information, and make the changes that the administrators need to make. There's also additional reporting and monitoring capabilities, which allow the administrators to get a better handle on what's going on in the environment, um, see if there's any problems, um, and also identify you know also identify different aspects about the way that searching is being done in the organization so that searching can be um, can be fine-tuned and another area of of search that we haven't really gotten into so far is the addition of fast search for SharePoint which is high-end integrated enterprise search so if you've got SharePoint server search 2010 is is, is extremely powerful but fast takes it up another notch and allows you to do even um, even more high-end type of queries. Here's an example of what the fast a uh, fast search results page looks like and 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 again it, it does look very similar to the to the SharePoint SharePoint search results but there's a few difference. Um, one thing you may notice over at the left hand side there whenever we have refiners we have not only just the list of refiners, but you'll notice that we've got a little number after each one of the refiners that tells us the number of documents in each refiner, as well as we can refine on pretty much every attribute. Where in SharePoint Search, it's a little bit, um, the number of things that you can refine on are a little bit more limited. Over in the center of the results page, we've got, um, we've got our results, but we've also got that, uh, the fast search document preview in the center that it gives us more information about, uh, uh, we can actually see that quick little preview of the document. And also if you had a, if you had a PowerPoint document in this, in this search result, um, you could actually browse through the different slides in the document. You can also, ha you can also sort, you'll notice the sort in the upper right hand corner, you can sort on, uh, on, on, on a number of more um, a number of more areas, not just by relevance or by name. Um, you can sort on a number of different criteria. So this is just a quick example of, of what FAST can do out of the box. Um, but FAST offers a, a number of additional capabilities that if you, if search is very important in your organization, I would recommend looking into the capabilities of FAST and, and how it can help you how it can help your users and your organization get a handle on the information that they're looking for.
In conclusion, what's new for SharePoint 2010? Well, a number of things. We've, we've talked about the fact that there have been improvements for the, the user search experience to users can go in, type in their search queries. They have more flexibility to type in um, more granular search results using the new query syntax. Uh, once they type in those search results, they can now use the uh, the refiners to get a handle on the type of information that they're looking for. And we also have had improvements to the relevancy. Uh, search is now social. Um, click through is now is now a part of the whole relevancy component. And the architecture has been has been changed to make SharePoint search even more scalable and redundant than ever before. And there's even been more new things uh, like we just talked about, um, including Fast. So please take a look at, uh, at, at Fast if that's something that, that sounds like it would be real, real beneficial in your organization. So thank you for listening and happy searching.